Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today the tables are turned as the Observer becomes the Observed with T90 playing as the Gurjaras in Teal taking on Hera playing as the Slavs in Red. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings looking for all manner of flora and fauna to consume and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, a pretty good time for us to look at the Civ matchup we are going to be watching. Now, the Grijaras are a civilization that focuses on man's other four-legged best friends, horses, camels, and elephants. Their camels and elephants are created faster. All of their mounted units per deal progressively more and more bonus damage as the game goes on, all the way up to 40% more bonus damage in Imperial. Their camel line units, their elephant archers can be upgraded to make them much, much harder to kill with a big plus four melee armor boost. And their first unique unit, the Shrevamsha Rider, is a super fast cavalry unit that can actually dodge enemy projectiles. Now, to support their mounted units on the field of battle against pesky, annoying things like maybe pikemen, halberdiers, the Gujaras can field a second unique unit, the Chakram Thrower. This is an infantry unit with a ranged melee attack that throws discs like Xena Warrior Princess. And just like Lucy Lawless's discs, these ones hit multiple targets at once. And by the way, they deal 100% pass-through damage to every unit they hit and also come with a nice little plus one attack bonus against infantry that help the Gurjaras build up their military. They do start the game as we saw, although one has been depleted with two free bushes underneath the town center. And if you're wondering why these adorable goat butts are swinging, swishing left to right as they head north into the mill, that is because the Gurjaras can actually garrison their livestock to auto-generate food. Now that T90 has all eight, if you take a look at the top left of your screen, 13 nuggets become 14, 14 becomes 15, and so forth and so forth as the game progresses. Now the Gurjaras can also upgrade their entire military line so that all of their military units cost 25% less food. Pivoting to the right side of the map where we've got Hera playing as the Slavs in red, a civilization that wastes no time getting right up in your grill. Their infantry, which is already quite strong, can be upgraded to do trample damage. And their unique unit, the Boyar, is a fairly slow, super tanky, powerful cavalry unit with a ridiculously high amount of both melee and pierce armor. As I always like to say, think Teutonic Knight on a horse. I don't know if that's a very original thing to say. I'm sure other people... Oh, <laughs> for a second, we got to see elephant butts. As I interrupt myself, interrupting myself, doing the Civ description. That just tells you everything you need to know about how... Uh, how this stream, uh, not stream, how this cast is going to go. Uh, I'm pretty sure other people have called the Boyar a Teutonic Knight on a horse, but uh, I like it, so I'm going to keep uh, sticking with it. Now, to support their melee units on the field of battle against a harassment by annoying ranged units, well, then all Slavic Siege Workshop units do come in 15% cheaper, which is fantastic for them because they have access to every single Siege Workshop unit with the exception of the Bombard Cannon, and those cheaper Siege units can be combined with Slavic Monks, which... By the way, move 20% faster than normal automatically to generate a powerful Siege Monk rush, adorably called a Smush. Now, Slavic castles themselves can be upgraded so that 40% of their stone cost is replaced with wood, which does save players about 260 stone per castle. Now, I say that with an asterisk per castle because you still have to pay full price for your first castle to research this unique technology in castle or, if you'd like, in Imperial. Now, to help grow their military production, the Slavs do get supplies and gambesons free of charge, and their farmers work 15% faster on their farms, which for a player like Hera, with a civilization that has uh, hussars, uh, I'm very much excited to see how, <laughs> how many hussars we see this game if we're lucky enough to go into the late game. Now, super cool feature of the Slavs, every single barracks, every single archery range, stable and siege workshop, actually provide five population space just like a house, which does free up more wood for farms, more castles, and even more army supply. So we'll see when Hera finishes constructing this barracks. If you take a look at the top of your screen where you see Hera is housed, although being housed not the end of the world since he's going up to feudal, that 20 out of 20 will become in about five seconds, 20 out of 25, a re uh, maybe out of 30 if this house completes first. Oh, it's a real race here. Yeah, 25, 20 out of 30. So this house, of course, had to complete mid-demonstration, and that kind of screwed up my little explanation. But in any event, as the players both head up to the next HT90 off the back of, it looks like one fewer, or rather two fewer villagers. Sorry, I saw the one here at the 17. It, 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 my brain glitched out, just like the game sometimes does. 
Primary gold for him, nice and secure to the back. Primary stone, very exposed. And looks like he's uh, walling a bit diagonally, not choosing to wall horizontally or make use of this stone as his uh, as a portion of his wall off. He's got additional gold to the south, additional stone to the south. And I like that he's got additional gold way here to the back next to a pretty thick and juicy forest. This is 8,000 wood that he has nice and secure. By the way, there's a second forest as well. I've always said players that kind of spawn in the corner areas of the map are always a little bit more advantaged than players that spawn along the middle side of, of the map because they do have access to a bit of a corner which they can wall off a little bit easier than their opponent. In my opinion, agree, disagree. Primary gold for our slab in the forward position, primary stone in the back. So stone is a little bit more secured, annoyingly placed on a hill. Uh, I wonder if he can fit a mining camp up here. If not, one down here should be just fine. Additional gold as well to the back. Additional gold a little bit off the beaten path. Secondary stone, uh, not exactly on the attack path, which, by the way, is almost a ridiculously comically straight line between the two bases, uh, which means we need to take a look at some forests and where they're located, as it looks like Hera is already pressuring his opponent with four militias and a scout. He's got two forests very far away from the town center, but in a kind of a forward position, bit of a forest to the north, also far away. He's uh, surrounded, ringed to the north, the east, and the west by mountains, but the south of his base, completely open. Speaking of completely open, look at T90's base, who, by the way, is pulling villagers, and it looks like I, of course, missed the first two kills of the game as Hera gets uh, a scout, it looks like. And one other unit will have seen that in picture in picture. In any event, it looks like Hera has the better forest placement with that combo of uh, forests here in the forward position. Whereas I think T90's gold is a little bit more secure. So eh, I would say fairly even base distribution. T90 also ringed to the south with these mountains. So these players might need to take more active measures to control these mountains. Not exactly the Georgians, not exactly the Tatars, but... You know, 25% more damage, 25% less damage is still a pretty good metric. And so you, if you're uh, surrounded like this, especially in the forward position as T90 is, I mean, this is a very ugly situation here for him. He's got a big depression here, a huge amount of high ground that Hera, if he chooses, can abuse. Or if T90 chooses, can use to defend really well. So we'll see how the players do. This is a very mountainous map, by the way. T90 has a big empty space in front of his base although luckily for him he is facing off against the slavs which aside from their hussars i'm not too sure are the quickest civilization on their feet kill count by the way evened up and it is now our gurjara who's heading out but with two scouts with a total of 17 hp i'm not too sure they're gonna get too much accomplished hera pushing in now with men at arms four five and a half dead scout as well so both players are gonna have to be a little careful with their scouting units uh, T90, are you going to attack? He is going to attack. I mean, these villagers can't be too scared of these scouts. Yeah, exactly. Mob justice here as Hera responds. But idling these villagers tells me he might be focused somewhere else as a second scout. And thus ends the Gurjara Expeditionary Force. Although I suspect T90 may not be too upset about that. Is he killing his own? Okay, so he is uh, pulling an interesting move here as T90 in the long run. I don't know why I said it like that. In the long run, having your eight hurtables inside your mill does generate more food. Now, I'm not spirit of the law by any means. My mathematics is not as uh, advanced, but I suspect there is a point in the game where having all eight of your livestock garrisoned in your town center does start to produce more food than have you had you initially eaten them. Now, T90 didn't initially eat them. He still garrisoned them. But now at the 15 minute mark or 14 minute mark, he started ungarrisoning them and slaughtering them. And I, I was wondering, maybe it's because his berries are uh, under attack, but no, the berries are nice and safe here behind a wall off. Oh, I hate these hill wall offs. Is this even walled in? I hope for T90's sake that it is. As he pushes in yet again, yet again, yet again, this time with archers first. Villager kill of the game going to our Gurjara, whose archers Feudal age and weak and feeble as they are do manage to gun down that one villager and now manage to gun down a scout. Uh, Hera's here with a lot of army supply. This is seven men at arms that are just trying to push and puncture their way through nine now. 
So I'm not too sure even two archers are going to be enough to dissuade this army from uh, continuing its attack. That being said, it's still a melee army, which means that these lumberjacks are pretty safe. Mix in one skirmisher, one archer unit, and all of a sudden these lumberjacks are going to go have to find another place to jack their trees. But for now, P90 trying to lure some of these units into the town center. Oh no, he busts in. He busts in. The lumber camp is gone. The villagers, even though they're chopping wood to their heart's content, have nowhere to drop it off now. So they're going to make the very dangerous, arduous journey right back to the town center. But this is a nice little spot here for T90. As the men-at-arms chase the villagers, the archers basically had a uh, the ability to just attack unopposed. And that's why there's a dead men-at-arms here. Two kills now. Still just the one villager. Kill counts are very similar. Hera here has gotten a lot more villager kills, three to one. But our Gurjara, he is not stopping with the aggression. I love these archer units. He's going up to 11 archer units, which means his food count should be nice and healthy since archers don't cost food. On the other hand, the men at arms very much do cost food. And so Hera, with two extra villagers maintaining that two villager lead, is uh, about 300 food behind his opponent. T90 will be going up to Castle Age first if he so wishes, and he does. And let's see how Harry responds. He has half the food, uh, a seventh of the gold, now a third of the gold. We'll see if he's paying attention, if he notices that T90's score dropped. And who moves faster here? Oh, Hera trying to pull a Viper. Oh my God. Found himself some pet archers, corrals them in. <laughs> oh, I love these uh, silly nonsense. Is he going to keep going? Is he going to keep going? Oh, a little bit too slow. Hera trying to do too many things at once. Uh, might as well just cast, cancel that house. But I think the archers still... I mean, the men at arms, what is it? 0 0.96? 0 0.9? I think the archers are 0.96, right? Yeah, so the archers should have been able to outrun those men-at-arms, which means T90 chose to take that engagement. Although cho choosing to take an engagement as your opponent actively tries to corral you and herd you is uh, is an interesting way of putting it, but uh oh. T90 doing an amazing job, by the way, sussing out that his opponent is going to go heavy on the infantry and mixing in a whole bunch of archers. He's going to hit Castle two minutes ahead of Hera. Let's see what he decides to do. No extra villagers on stone for him. Hera's got four villagers on stone. Getting the gold mining upgrade. T90's not paying attention. Damn you, farm, he says. Screw your 60 wood. But has exposed him to a little bit of sword play here. As these archers finally gun down the last of Hera's uh, abro forces abroad. Hera continuing the infantry play. Okay, so he's doubling down. Whereas our Gurjara getting Botkin, Crossbow, Bosa. So he seems like he is firmly inserting the Archer meta into this matchup. And I wonder if it'll work out. Time will tell. We'll see how Hera decides to respond. I suspect Hera won't stay on infantry for very long uh, against this. Okay. Tower, definitely a good choice against a low HP unit like a Crossbow, which has a massive 35 HP and no armor of any kind. Now, basically, T90 knows that there's a shelf life on these crossbows. The Grujaras don't get Arbalests. They don't get Ring Archer armor. You'll see at the top left of your screen, they're that black square there. So there's a shelf life to these crossbows. They're not going to last very long into Imperial. Second town center for him. We'll see in 15 seconds how our slab decides to respond. Okay, one villager being pulled off. I wonder if one villager is enough. Let's see, 1350, 1340, 13... 1280, no, he's got to pull a second villager if he wants to keep that stable up. Out comes the Shravamsha Rider, an incredibly food-intensive unit that you definitely need Kshatriyas for, but I forgot to point out as I was talking about uh, the shelf life of crossbows that uh, our Gurjara has just snuck into the murder hole radius of this tower. And unless something comes out here, is there a siege workshop? Nope. Unless something comes out here to contest those crossbows, they'll take down that tower, and then those villagers inside. Look at that one villager managed to get a poke off at the Shravamsha. <laughs> and now T90 moves in with another crossbow force to the left. Will he enter into the dead zone yet again? Yes, he does. 
that being said a force of nine men at arms they are at plus one plus two i bet they wish they were romans with double the armor upgrade effects okay villagers pop out it's our gurjara by the way who's taken the villager kill lead seven to three eight to three so something's happening on this side of the map as well as the shravamsha enters in here but with three hp he's got to be super careful you can dodge your five arrows but three hp is still a <laughs> a uh basically a strong breeze will kill that unit what an absolute epic unit to raid with when your opponent only has a single tower five arrows dodge but now the arrows i believe the mechanic yeah it's resetting and then you just get the hell out of there we saw last game with the gurjaras about when was it four or five days ago the shravamsha rider with husbandry 1.76 tiles a second is just a lightning fast unit and now our Gujara tells, basically signaling to Hera, I don't want anything to do with you in the super late game, so I'm just going to try to smush you with my crossbows. Takes down the tower to the right, but there's that siege workshop. There's that 15% cheaper scorpion being repaired by a villager. Oh, <laughs> forget the chakram. Here comes the OG pass-through damage dealer. Oh, man, that was a fantastic shot. Couple of shots there. But Scorpion will go down before I can check how many kills it got exactly. Crossbow dangerously flirting with death here as he passes through the town center radius. Escapes unscathed. Uh, okay. Kind of sticking around. All right. Not the end of the world. Losing a crossbow here and there. Let's take a look as the players disengage. T90 turns around. Those reinforcements are not really reinforcing anything at the moment. Looks like he... Did, did he lose that stable? No, he repaired it. And now he's... Pl Plugging up a hole in the forest, it becomes so hard in the late stages of the game. And with 61 villagers, I mean, oh man. Uh, by the way, before I dive into that, how hard it is to maintain your defenses when your lumberjacks are just cutting holes like Swiss cheese through your forests. Look at the villager count. T90s ahead, 18 villagers. Army supply is identical. But Hera is moving forward just as T90 is moving out. Let's take a very quick look at the bases before the players engage. We've got one, two, three town centers for our Gujara. He's sticking on Shravamshas. He's going bloodlines. He's getting wheelbarrow. So his economy is going to be running a little bit quicker. His Shravamshas are going to be a little bit tankier. No husbandry just yet. Hera walls off his villagers, does not want these lightning fast units attacking them for his part. He is also going up to a third town center, is now down. I mean, the, the numbers keep changing every time I look up and I move my mouse up there. Does anyone else feel uh, old when they look at something on the screen and then they have to use their mouse? I feel like my parents, when they read something and they use their finger, like on a menu, you know, you go to a restaurant with your parents and they're like, ooh, uh, the chicken souvlaki looks good. But they're like reading along with their finger. I feel like I'm doing the same thing with a mouse. And now it's making me feel a little depressed and old. What is it making me feel depressed and old is seeing a man and I'll try to get a whole bunch of uh, slow moving infantry units. Okay, it says F that goes for the scorpion. At the back of Hera's base T90 still there with crossbows. Now he's up to 13 villager kills. But with a town center garrison by now crossbows as well. These men at arms are not men at arms. Sorry, long swords, but now are not going to last very long here. Anti-90 is going to just run around with these villagers, keep these red soldiers moving just as the last of his army also disappears. But unlike Hera's, which is dead, T-90 still has his. But as I was uh, saying before, without the Arbalest upgrade, these uh, Gurjara crossbows are basically as good as it gets. It's like when you see a Teutonic scout, you know he unfortunately will never mature. He will never grow up to be a man, a light cav, or a hussar. He's just stuck, arrested development. Ooh, I don't know what that actually killed beyond a uh, zebra. That second shot got a better, better bit of damage there. Oh, Hera banking on his opponent, retreating, but T90 goes right up in his grill. T90 is ahead in total kills. He's ahead in villager kills. He's ahead in army supply. He's ahead in population count. He's ahead in villager count now, almost uh, 20 villagers ahead. This is an absolute fantastic, fantastic show so far out of our caster. And what is the end game here? Because like I said, crossbows are not going to do it. Especially since they are stuck at crossbows forever. A castle going up for him. 
and I'm assuming if Hera keeps going infantry, we're going to see some chakram throwers, chakram throwers rather, out of our Gurjara, who now has to retreat from a single monk. The power of the monk. But P90 says, I don't care if I lose a few crossbows. Oh man, he's losing a lot of crossbows. Okay, that <laughs> he tried to snipe that monk, but Hera too quick on his feet. I like the death animation of a crossbow. They kind of jump backwards, even though nothing's really uh, nothing's really happening to them. What killed you? A mangonel here. Man, I thought Mr. Yo, who was a lover of the Hydra style attack of five different attack groups at once, but D90 is giving him a run for his money here. Okay, he's back yet again with the crossbows. Now, I guess now they're crossbows before they were archers. And he lames an entire wood line. Hera hoping that this Manganil will reach these crossbows quick enough. Keeps his villagers busy constructing a house. But six villagers are going to take, what, about 10 seconds? And now he moves forward, which should signal to T90 that, hey, wait a second, there's something coming. Hera feels confident enough to go back to work. Hera, Hera's attack rounds gets it. And even though the rocks came from behind, the, the uh, crossbows jumped backwards. Again, one of the cool death animations. Now we've got them. There they are, Chakrams. Condottiero, zero infantry, zero in their elite form. They come with a plus one attack against both of those. Condottieri, not exactly units we are expecting to see in this matchup. But ahead, 10 total population, T90. Oh, he is actually... I'm trying to look left, right, left, right. I wish it was a crocodile sometimes with two eyes in two different directions. I think they're going to hit Imperial at the exact same time. Hera, 18 villagers down, but now his army supply has gotten ridiculous. 20 to 12, 21 to 11. What is he going for? Continuing with that infantry unit, Slavic infantry line, about as pristine as you can get every single barracks upgrade. And remember, Gambesons and uh, supplies for free as well as every blacksmith upgrade. And if we're lucky enough to see a Druzhina, the trample damage. I'm trying to remember. I forget that there's like different terms for the same thing. These guys have to be so careful. And look, even though the uh, the attack of the Chakram is at a base of a three, the pass-through damage is 100%. So each disc, it's like an Arambi. Even if it lands on a different unit, does 100%. In this case, it's not that it lands on a different unit, but it does pass through like a scorpion and it does 100% damage to every single unit it lands on. T90 is here to the north. He's reinforcing with chakrams. He's here to the south with eyeballs, exploring the map. And let's see. I, I actually want to take a look at his vision. Oh, silly, silly infantry units. You are not supposed to be engaging into chakram throwers. Look at T90. He's enveloping the map in a bit of a C-shaped vision scouting construction project, and he's not done. More and more outposts. Hera? Hera sees his side of the world, not much beyond it. Okay, both players in Imperial were going siege on it, or rather onager for our slab. Let's see it. There's Kshatrias, which is going to reduce the food burden on the military for the Gurjaras by 25%. I mean, this is about as good a unit to zone out Chakrams as you can get. Chakram uh, range just stuck at 5 to the 7. Now, I believe Slavs do get Siege Engineers. That's the funny thing. They don't get... Ooh, T90 cancels his castle, rebuilds it here inside the base. So he might expect Hera to puncture through his way in here. But he won't get too far with that castle there. So that, that that's the kind of funny thing about this matchup, whereas the Slavs, they don't get Bombard Cannons, but they do have Siege Engineers... And the Gurjaras have Bombard Cannons, but no Siege Engineers. I don't know if that's funny to you. It's funny to me. Will he continue scouting? He sees the town center, but the action is now firmly swung onto the side of our Gurjaras. As the castle lamed that hill. By the way, fantastic location for a castle. Look at this King of the Hill castle here. I mean, Hera's... Oh, Hera hasn't seen this castle. Okay, so he's going to take a bit of arrow fire before he retreats. Reaction time... Fantastic for memory. He's getting blast furnace. So Hera prioritizing attack, attack, attack. Because he all actually, what, what am I talking about? Prioritizing attack, attack, attack. He already has all the armor upgrades. So 
<laughs> oh my goodness, I was looking at the top left of our screen. As happens sometimes. Very, very professional casting heroes. Here we go, T90. He's... Hera's attack rounds getting the two scouts to the south, but also killing two of his own swordsmen. Uh, not too sure what the point of cutting through the four. Oh, he's creating a nook for himself. And the swordsmen catch the horsemen. The horsemen die. They do get one onager for their troubles. Ooh, fantastic attack round there as well. Now, these are two civilizations, if I'm not mistaken, that actually do have access to hussars. Which is another fun kind of oddity of this matchup, whereas you've got one civilization whose Hussars are 25% cheaper, which I believe makes them the cheapest Hussars in the game. I'm trying to think. I think they do. I mean, I think they are. Versus a civilization whose farmers work 15% faster, so even though they're paying full price, you can pump them out a whole lot quicker. Hussar for our Gurjara, Siege Onager for our Slav. Let's freaking go. This is going to be an epic matchup. Uh, T90 is going to have to do his darndest to try to snipe as many Siege Onagers as he can, while Hera is going to have to do his darndest to kill as many <laughs> Chakrams, as many Hussars as possible. And here comes the Hussar spam. We're going Elite Chakrams as well. So let's take a look, by the way, at how many uh, stables T90 has. Eight. Okay, eight is good. Eight is a good start. How many Siege Workshops for our Slav? Just two. That is not good. Look at Hera's resources. He is floating a significant amount of resources. Unfortunately for him, if he's going onager, he <laughs> needs more wood, not more food. 45, 55 on uh, food might be a little bit of overkill as now we've got Hussars coming in. Oh, a love tap kills two. They must have been very badly damaged from before. Three siege onagers in exchange for one Hussar. I mean, talk about one of the best trades in Age of Empires history. That might just be it. Uh, might want to get ballistics. <laughs> I think Aaron notices that aside from killing these two chakrams that were basically kissing the castle, he was missing every other volley, and so now he's getting ballistics. Now he's getting conscription. He's going up to 10 siege onagers. No, you're not watching Deathmatch. No, you're not watching Michi. No, you're not watching Rage Forest. You are watching an Arabia map. Uh, okay, Hera just killing his own villagers now. I guess it's like a one big psyop against these villagers. He's mixing in halberdiers as well. But they are not Lithuanian, so they don't get any kind of speed boost. They're not Celtic. So they're just going to move at their basic, what is it, 1? I want to say 1. 1.1? One. Yeah, 1.1. And now T90 is going to do to Hera what I thought Hera was going to do to T90, which is just absolutely go everywhere all at once with these Hussars. Okay, but now the castles have ballistics. Two villagers with pickaxes in their hands. You know, we, we, we can help. We just don't really feel like it today. We're just going to watch. Another scuffle. Hera has been knocked down from 10 onagers to 3. T90 doing an amazing job trading out actual trash, trash units. Again, 25% cheaper. Hussars is super trash units. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Bloodlines Light Cavalry. Our slab is about to respond. There's a construction project going on with stables. How many is he going up to? Only four. Is T90 still on eight? Okay, now 11. Okay, I like to see low double digits. Like, like, teens, let's say. Ooh, that sounded really, really pervy in light of everything that's going on uh, with uh, Nickelodeon and Epstein and all this stuff to say I like, it. I like them in their teens. I meant I like to see... 15 stables if you're going to start spamming Hussars, especially these ridiculously cheap Hussars, especially if you've got 78 villagers on food. I think 15 is the perfect number. Oh, they dodged the Onager shot. They're closing in and another dead Onager. Hera deletes his own house. How sour is that? Tried to escape with that Onager, but this time it's not free. This time it's not free at all. That is a lot of food still wasted. Hera's gold count has been almost depleted. He's getting his Sar upgrades himself. Rather, just got the Hussar upgrade himself. They are fully upgraded. The Gurjaras, unfortunately, do miss out on Blast Furnace. Although, look at that monk attack. 17 attack bonus against monks. And here we go. What our Slav does not have. Oh, where were you going? Where were you going, silly, silly BBC? 
And now our Gurjara is going to try to pull our Slav in multiple directions. Our Slav knows it immediately starts walling off. Look at T90, Sus susses it out. And now he knows there's three villagers here right for the taking. We'll keep an eye on those Hussars, but the real action here to the north as both players have plopped down castles. T90s is on the higher ground. He's only got one treb to the two of his opponents. Where are his Bombard Cannons, or rather Bombard Cannon Singular? I can click on it, but I don't want it to take us away from this battle. And now Hera is going to lead T90 on a chase as T90 is leading him. I mean, there's just, they're, this is becoming a ridiculous. This is becoming a little bit, uh, I, I'm going to twist the neck muscle watching this game. Asar's closing on the Treb. Their outlines tell us that they might get the Treb, but even if they do, it's still going to cost... Oh, <laughs> let's see some pancakes. Forget everything else that's going on around the map. There are two Siege Onagers here being controlled by Hera. His castle is down. The cover is no longer there. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's exactly what we wanted to see, but two Onagers is now down to one. Is he the one with all the kills? 11 kills, 3 friendly fire, eh, about 25-30% friendly fire. Oh, T90 going straight for this, and this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Kind of looks like all the raiding around the map is over, except the T90 still has a few Hussars here. That one Halberdier, one champion Halberdier has cleaned up, reinforcing Siege Onagers are getting caught out. So T90 has discovered that Hera has to make his way north with his onagers and now he's inserting his hussars into the movement path the reinforcing path and he's managing to catch out individual siege onagers great attack rounds there the bombard cannon to the left trying to do as much as it possibly can i don't think i got that siege onager where's the siege onager going oh he's going after the bbc fails to get it and the players well the players disengage the stronger Hussar here is to our Slav, who has mixed in some Halberdiers, but his Treb goes down. Hera is now Trebless in Seattle, whereas his opponent has one BBC, one Treb. Where is uh, T90's Treb, by the way? Okay. Hanging out. Having a bit of a break before it gets called into action. Gets its reservist papers in order. And now we've gone full trash order. We are 55 minutes into the game. The scores are about 5% difference. It says Hera's ahead. I'm not so sure about that. T90 is catching reinforcements left, right, and center. Speaking of catching reinforcements, I don't know where the hell this monk thought he was going. And Hera is not stopping Onager production. T90 is not stopping Hussar production. So one player desperately trying to snipe, one des player desperately trying to squash the other. Castle goes up. We'll keep this one Siege Onager here safe. And Hera, knowing that his units have to go through this path, now places a castle. So T90 is going to have a bit more of a difficult time catching out these Onagers. And if he does, he'll be doing so with damaged and injured units. Again, Hera kills more of his own units with this SO. Attack round there, nicking a few of those Hussars. But man, we are just watching fluid fluid art in action as both players engage disengage trying to rip each other's throats out but how many castles for our slab four castles six castles still 11 stables okay so t90 oh my god another pancake t90 believes 11 stables are going to be enough to reinforce constantly he's adding he's going up to 46 chakram throwers Okay, so he's very confident. Oh, the players are disengaged. We've got an arms race developing here. Both players sitting at pretty identical villager populations, 138 to 136, which means their army supplies are going to be very identical as well. And I love the cessation of hostilities for just a brief, brief moment. As again, the players build up their militaries. We're approaching the one hour mark of the game. I have no freaking clue who's winning this. I mean, naturally, on a map in an a on a map like Arabia, where resources run out at around this time, let's say in another five to ten minutes, there's probably not going to be any gold left on the map. You would suspect that the player going onager would be a little bit disadvantaged, but you would be wrong. 
15% <laughs> discount, even though it doesn't sound like much, has allowed Hera to build probably five or six extra Siege Onagers, and the Chakrams absolutely demolish. They're not supposed to do that. 20 kills for them, but they're moving dangerously close to the Onagers. Onagers, by the way, with Siege Engineers. Oh, <laughs> oh here we go, but the Onagers are exposed. The Onagers are exposed. Not too sure what this one monk thinks he's going to do against the Sars. Hera loses his Treb yet again. Uh-oh, uh-oh, T90, T90! Oh, my goodness! Look at how cool they look when they're dead. That was ridiculously sour. 40 kills on these guys. Only 8 friendly, which is a 20% friendly kill rate. Eh, not the greatest. Not the worst. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, again, Hera kills his own villagers. It's like, like a false flag attack, like the Gulf of Tonkin situation here. Oh, D90! D90 is losing his stars left, right, right, and center, but he doesn't care. They're cheap. He can throw them away. But he's got to come up with a way to deal with Hera's relic of gold with all five relics and a 15% discount on Siege Hera is just going to keep producing these onagers all the live long day. Not too sure what that attack round was. Uh, Hera seeing army where army doesn't exist. These are not Korean onagers. Their minimum range still is three, which means these hussars are going to do a good job. Closing in, one goes down. Second should go down as well. My voice is dying. I think a second and maybe even a third went down there. I think just two. But look at the look at the HP on these guys. Hera needs to repair them ASAP. Players have been knocked down into the 113 to 120 range of villagers, which means they've got more room for army. And both players are streaming army to the other side of the map. Another attack round out of our slab. Uh oh, uh oh. T90 is being as effective as he possibly can. Another dead Slavic villager. He knows that the cooldown on these units is six seconds. So if you can get them to fire on one Hussar here, that means you've got six seconds to close on them from Hussars to the other side or the south or the north. Otherwise, they will see you coming. They will do an attack round. And now it looks like Harris raiding the back of T90's base. It might be the first time he's doing so he's also here to the center of the map where t90 is garris stationed rather a whole bunch of his own hussars but raiding be damned let's see how well these siege onagers do he's got eight of them armies are yet again moving into position t90 moves forward with three bombard cannons he's got three more somewhere and let's see it oh <laughs> so close okay Bombards will be able to kill these siege onagers now, even without and siege engineers, even with just basic 12 range, they do outrange these onagers significantly. Another fantastic attack round there, but three of these onagers are so incredibly bruised. Castle on the high ground, giving it a little bit more longevity. More units streaming in. Will T90? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! They're clumping! They're clumping! <laughs> oh. oh, you love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. This is a... a he, now he got his own Treb with these Siege Onagers. So T90's castle is down. A whole bunch of uh, construction there. T, uh, Hera's got to keep this game messy. He has no choice. He's got to keep Halberdiers and Hussars surrounding. Oh, oh my God. He misses. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> and just like that, just like that. What is that? Seven, eight onagers disappear in the blink of an eye to the Chakram Thrower, whose attack bonus is against infantry. It deals six damage, but because they're so bruised and battered, because their HP is shite, they do not have Fuhrer Celtica. No, oh, but Hera responds. We'll lose two more. That was epic. That was epic. You guys know I'm turning that into a short. You absolutely best believe I'm turning that into a short. That was an absolute epic, epic get there by T90, who basically resets Hera's Siege Onager count. And this is exactly 
what I was talking about. T90 is relying on trash. Oh, he's selling a lot of wood for gold. What is he doing with his gold? He's building villagers and hussars, both of which only cost food. So why did he sell all that wood? But Hera. Okay, Hera himself going back up to eight. As we can see up top, they both have zero villagers on gold. But what Hera has is five relics. So if he loses these eight onagers, he's going to, you know what? Train eight more. And after that, you got it. Eight more. Players disengage yet again, but Hera unrelenting. He knows the Chakrams are injured. And now they are in small enough number. Only six left that they sh Oh my goodness, this is an absolute swarm. Army count. Our Slav is ahead about 20%, 30%. He's also now ahead in villager count. <gasps> what an absolute epic game you, you know somebody in uh in during the live streams that we uh we do every friday suggested there might be a tournament for casters to uh to play I, I, after seeing t90 play i don't think i'm gonna be entering into that uh, <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna be entering into that tournament but wow i mean look look at the battlefield look at this what an absolute insane game. What an epic, epic game. I mean, I missed a lot of rating. We'll have seen that in picture in picture for the most part. I don't think it's possible to have gotten all of it because then there'd be uh, three screens here, three screens here, and then you wouldn't see any of the main game. But what an absolute epic. I wish I knew how many units Hera's Siege Onagers killed. Just the Siege Onagers this game. I suspect, oh, I mean, look at the kill count, 809. I suspect 200 plus of that is Siege Onagers, if not more than, than that. Almost 500 for Grujara, who at the end of the day does kill 25 more villagers, 30% more villagers than his opponent, which is not terrible. But look at our slab. He gobbled up all five relics. By the way, I, can, I guess I could uh, go over the numbers here, but let's take a look at the stats. 500 Hussars. There's your 25% uh, discount against 300 although to be fair Herod did go up to Hussars a little bit later PKPM towards the beginning PKPM towards the middle surprise Hera is a little bit below his usual 200 these economies if you remove the relic gold they're identical that is ridiculous what an absolute absolute insane game out of I mean that's why it lasted over an hour a lot more wood for one a little bit more food gold identical stone identical and so why is there the 5,000 difference? I guess it's just the wood that may, makes that major difference. Conversions, I can't really see playing out. Two out of 644 is, oh my goodness. Buildings destroyed, also not the, uh, the end of the day here, but wow. I mean, when a game goes an hour and eight minutes, it's very hard to analyze it because there's just about a billion things that uh, T90 did right. There's about a billion things that Hera did right. And I'm when I say T90, I'm focusing on Hera's base because I'm reminded of uh, about 100 years ago when this game started of how he was non-stop harassing with crossbows. Non-stop harassing with crossbows. Full attack upgrades for them. Non-stop harassing. Killed Hera's villagers. He, he uh, I believe even in the early stages of the game, after he was down one villager killed to, or rather, 3-0 to zero or 3-1, to one, he ramped it up and got a whole bunch more villager kills. And look at these two. I'm going to zoom out. I mean, look at this. East versus West, Teal versus Red, Gurjara versus Slav, map carved right down the middle. Both players want nothing to do with the rating of the other player, even though, I mean, they both left giant gaping holes in their defenses. Uh, <laughs> so not exactly the most effective of wall-offs by both players, but holy moly. Relic gold for the absolute win. This tower here has been on fire for the last 5,000 years. It has been burning up. And at the end of the day, T90's resources, good as they are, are not as good as our slab. Now, the score, if you look at it, 23-3 to 18-9. That's about a 20-plus percent difference in score. I, I mean, I get the kill count, but I feel like the game was a lot closer than the score lets on. And T90, by the way, still has 35 army supply. He still has 25 hussars. He still has four bombard cannons. Where the hell are they? They're here trying not to die to halberdiers of all things. Castle raking up 17 kills. This guy, 34 kills. 
Oh, this is going to be fun just going around the castles. 14. We saw the 17. This guy can't have that many. Zero. This guy can only have one. 13, 15, 22. And we saw the 34. So this is a badass castle here. 34 kills. But ultimately, I think our Gurjari, even with the 25% discount on Hussars, just ran out of resources. And more importantly, his position to the north dislodged his trebs gone. The majority of his bombard cannons gone. Now he's uh, in the very unfortunate position of being on the receiving end of Hera's Hussars, which uh, nobody really wants to be on the receiving end of. Let's put it like that. You do not want to be... Uh, you do not want to have to start defending your base in seven different locations, which is exactly what Hera is going to start doing right now, ramping up that Hussar production, no doubt. At the end of the day, okay, 11 stables to 11 stables. Interesting. So both players agreeing, disagreeing with me, agreeing with one another that 11 is the magical number. And with that 11 and with the absolute mayhem that this game has been, again, I don't know what I can really analyze at the end of the game except to say what an absolute fun, fun game between these two players it is ultimately our Slav whose siege units just absolutely pancaked everything and anything they could, even though that was about as beautiful a get by T90. I forget if it was here or here or here. It doesn't really matter. Those eight onagers and then followed up by the two reinforcing onagers that he got with his chakrams. I mean, he paid for it at the end with those chakrams dying. But what a fantastic, fantastic get out of him. But unfortunately, now that he's slowly starting to get overrun, he sees the writing on the wall. He knows that Harris is going to absolutely jam these Hussars into every nook and cranny of this base of this settlement. He also can't contest the Relic Gold. GG's lives to fight another day. And so it is our Slav with 800 kills and the absolute beast of a Siege Onager that takes the W. But GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.